people of the tube, and welcome back to another review. So about, I don't know, a year, two years ago, the Amazing Spider-Man movie came out. And I did a review of it, and I liked it pretty well. Well, the second one came, and has now went, and I never got a chance to watch it until recently. And, um, of course, now I'm going to review it, so that I reviewed the first. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a continuization of... Peter Parker from The Amazing Spider-Man 1. Him and Gwen Stacy have now graduated high school. Uh, Dr. Lizard is gone. And everything seems to be looking up. Uh, Andrew Garfield, the guy who plays Spider-Man uh, and Spider-Man himself, are um, doing pretty well. Spider-Man's well liked by the city and the police. And for everyone likes Spider-Man, including this... Uh, Harry Osborn, which is his old friend, who is now the owner of Oscorp after his father passes away. Um, of course, during all this, Spider-Man's also fighting his new enemies. Uh, Rhino pops up, classic Spider-Man enemy, and he only pops up for most, like, ten minutes. He's kind of useless. And the second enemy pops up, and that's Electro, which is the main concentration of the film, the main enemy, basically. Uh, Electro was a black guy who Spider-Man saved. I thought he thought Spider-Man was his friend. It didn't turn out too well, so now he wants to kill Spider-Man for betraying him. And then the third enemy, which is Hobgoblin, uh, comes in towards the end of the film. Okay, what do I think of this movie? Well, a lot of people hate this movie. The first one had really good reception. This one had very bad reception. Um, let me start with the good. Uh... Garfield as uh, Spider-Man does a great job, better than Tobey Maguire ever thought about being. He's great. Um, Gwen Stacy, or Stacy Gwen, whatever fuck her name is in the movie, uh, is great. They they have great chemistry as a couple, way better than Tobey Maguire and Chris and Dunn's characters in the original, and all the acting is pretty well done by almost every character in the film. And that is the best part of the film, is the the acting and the action. The action is fucking fantastic, along with the special effects, which are also really good. Now, what's the bad? Well, let's we'll start with Rhino. Rhino's in it for approximately 7 to 10 minutes at the most. He's kind of useless. They introduce him in the beginning, and he goes to jail, and he doesn't come out till the end, which... Uh, spoiler alert, they're pretty much building up for a third film, which I'm guessing would have been The Sinister Six. Um, uh, so, he's barely in it, and he's not that grave an enemy. So they obviously didn't give him backstory or build him up, so he's kind of useless. Uh, Electro has a pretty shitty backstory. Um, a lot of the times on the old Spider-Man movies, it was all about revenge. Get revenge against Spider-Man, or, or t t to do something. This one was just... A lonely dude who got saved by Spider-Man, then he got electrocuted by eels, and now he's Electro, and he, no one likes him, so he's bad. Um, I feel sorry for him. He's a, he's a bad villain with stupid ideals, but I did feel sorry for him. In fact, I noticed I actually felt sorry for Hobgoblin too, which of course is the son of the owner of Oscorp, and I felt sorry for him because he didn't deserve what he got either. So, the villains themselves aren't, like, good enough to really become big players to me. Their backstories weren't too fleshed out. We didn't get to spend too much time with them. They were kind of, not goofy, but this weren't that great. Out of uh, all the films, I would say this one had the least, even though it had the most villains... I would say this one had the least amount of impact for villains. Uh, even worse than Dr. Lizard. Because at least Dr. Lizard, we, they built up. Um, this movie, I would say, is the weakest of the Spider-Man franchise. But I still like it better than Spider-Man 3. Like, not like the Sam Raimi franchise. So I can't really fault it too much because that movie still exists and it still sucks um and like venom in that movie some of the villains in this movie was useless too 
So, when it comes down to it, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is not that great. And it's not something that I would say is worth watching a lot. I would say if you were into the first Amazing Spider-Man, you should check out this one. Like, it, the acting is good. There are some heartfelt, warming moments. There is a part that's really devastating if you liked uh, Gwen and their relationship in the films. And I would say it's a decent film. I don't think it should get a lot of shit like it did. But I can understand why a lot of people didn't like it. So I'm going to give Amazing Spider-Man 2 a thumbs up just for you to watch if you've seen the first one. If you've never seen the first one, then don't think that you have to watch this one. Because you don't. So if you need to, watch it. Or if you don't want to, don't. Peace the fuck out.